Well, hello there, beautiful shrimp people. In today's Saturday Roundup video, because that is what these videos are, that we're going to uh, feed our shrimp some spinach because it's something that I don't do enough. And let me show you what I mean, guys, by feeding spinach. It's just basically any kind of frozen spinach or fresh spinach if you grow it yourself. And all we're doing here, guys, is we're adding boiling hot water to the spinach and we're letting it sit for, I don't know, what, four or five minutes. Make sure you give it a little stir and make sure before you add it to the tanks it's nice and soft right so let's leave this a few more minutes yet yeah, give it a little stir and we are also going to be adding some fulvic to our tanks because guys this is something that I normally do do quite regularly when I remember to do it but the issue for me was I moved house and all my stuff went kind of uh, missing so what we are going to do today is also is we're going to add some fulvic right so I guys I have a lot of generic fulvic this one just happens to be rich one from Qualdrop and uh, what we're going to do here guys is we're going to fill our bottle here this could be any bottle you can even use a syringe to add stuff to your tanks we're going to fill it with some water right and I think I roughly have about 14-15 soft water tanks in here so we're going to use about half a litre just like this, as you can see. And yeah, that should do lovely. And guys, we are going to add our fulvic to this water here. So Qualdrop's recommendations for adding fulvic is one of the little scoops per 25 litres of water, right? So we have, what? what is that? 14, it's basically 30 scoops, which is an awful lot, but let's add 30 scoops just to see what it looks like. Normally I do one, guys. Two, three, 29, and finally 30. I'm going to put 31 because some of these scoops were like half ass scoops. <laughs> let's get one more extra one in there. Yes, if you're wondering why I sound a little bit funny today, it's because I've just woken up. Me and the wife were on a crime drama marathon last night, watching stuff until like 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right, and right now it's like 9 o'clock in Norway, so I've been, I went to sleep for maybe 5 hours. Yes, let's never do that again. Right, so my lid here is just open, so I'm going to cover it with my finger and just give this a lovely little shake. And guys, the thing I love about Fulvic stuff is is it smells sweet to me, right? I get the same smell as you do when you smell molasses or brown sugar, as an example. Fulvic acid. I don't know if there's a connection between the two. Let me know in the comment section below if there is. But it smells, to me, it smells like you could eat the stuff. Like, I, I think I could eat it and enjoy it just because it smells like brown sugar kind of thing. So let's give this a good shake before we add some to the tongues. And yeah, it seems an awful lot, doesn't it? Seems an awful lot, but this is the recommended dose. So we're going to put little squirts of this in each tank until we've finished with the bottle. Right, as I said, you'd normally do this when you do a water change, but as, as I've uh, recently moved house, my stuff has been all over the place, so I'm gradually going through bottles looking for bits and pieces. Let's uh, remember and stir our spinach while we're at it as well. Oh my God, I'm like a, an alchemist here, or a witch, maybe a, a warlock making stuff. Eye of you, wing of bat. <laughs> and guys, we're talking about spinach there, right? Spinach is one of those foods that you should always feed your shrimp, guys. I, I recommend that you feed spinach like this at least one day a week. It's really, really important. Baby shrimp love this stuff. So let's get our stuff into our containers. Let's, uh, let's do it sitting here for a second. Because... Uh, yeah, you'll be able to see a little bit easier here. I'm going to put some in some tanks. I'm going to give it a good squirt right across the surface like this. And uh, we're going to move the tank. We're going to move the tanks and we're going to move the camera at the same time. Let's do this middle row really, really quickly. Guys, I'm just looking for a gap to put the stuff in. Fulvic. Guys, I can actually smell this stuff and I want to drink it because I like the smell so much. <laughs> yeah, see, it's really easy to put in once you get stuff like these bottles. 
So the great, great thing, guys, about this Saturday morning video that we do is... Can you guys see up there? I don't think you can. The great thing about the Saturday morning video that we do is... It's like a real shrimp keeper video where... Yeah, you guys are with me in the shrimp room. You're actually seeing real, real shrimp keeping stuff that we would do to breed, mass breed our shrimps. Let's see, a wee bit in here. Oh, shall I drink it, guys? I have one tank over here. These guys are doing really, really well over here. Let me take you over for a wee second so you can see as well. Yeah, they're doing really, really well. They've had babies since we last spoke, which you will see at some point in this video as well, because, yeah, we're going to be drawing out all these little baby shrimplets. And uh, is there anything else in here that could do with Felix? Because, yeah, we have a wee bit extra, or shall we just put it into some of our bigger tanks? You don't really add this to neocardinian tanks, cause, because fulvic acid is actually has a low pH rate, so yeah, I'm away up here. Let's turn you around again. Let's put you back over here. We're gonna add the rest of this, just to this side, randomly put in until the bottle's finished. This tank is quite big, so it can get a lot of fulvic. You know, I, did, I didn't do these two tanks, did I? Oh. Yeah, we just had enough. Just goes to show Mark not paying attention, forgot about two tanks behind, right? So fulvic acid is really, really good to have in aquariums. You'll be a bit far away, let me bring you over here. All right, shrimp family. Let's see how our spinach is doing here. Right, so I said, I said to you I wanted to leave it for a good four or five minutes and let me see on the GoPro yeah it's been about eight minutes since we started the video so it should be ready by now and this is the way I like to do it guys with my spinach so this spinach can go in all of our tanks right so I like to have a container of fresh water and we're going to add this water here to this and the only reason I do this guys is because I don't want to put my hands in the boiling hot water I don't want to strain it but I want to see it flowing in a container like this Right, because it's just easier for me to put my hands in and out of the container. You will see. Like, for, like this, for example, look. Right, so we have lovely spinach leaves here. You see them all floating around? They're all free-flowing. Right, I see that lovely big leaf. Look, my hand's going in. No problem. Water's not boiling hot. They're all ready separated because this is the main reason I do it. You can see them here? They're all separated. Right, if you pile them all, if you take them all out, if you strain them, put them in a pile, it can be very hard to take them out. Right, so let's add these to the tank. So I'm going to use a pair of tweezers. If I can get a set out here, a pair of tweezers, and guys, let's add some to the tanks. Now, there is no hard and fast rule with this, but obviously you should add smaller bits to tanks that don't have so many shrimp. And uh, tanks in my room, guys, that have the red mark on them won't be getting any food because there's an issue with the tank. If it's green, the tank is good. If there is no marker, it means I need to reset the tank. What, I'm, what I should get, guys, is like a yellow or an orange tape. What I'm talking about here is, is these things. You see them? Red tape means there's an issue with the tank. Green means the tank is good. There should be one on that tank because that tank is actually good. Let me see. Yeah, so as you can see, I have them all pre-cut up here, like this. Just little bits of electrical tape. Green means good. Right, so it's very useful for not forgetting about the things in your shrimp room when you have so many tanks. Right, so let's start to add this to the tanks. And guys, I'm going to actually add it to empty tanks as well. You guys are way over there. Because um, there still will be micro animals and stuff in these tanks that will want food. And don't worry guys, I'm not going to leave you way over there onto the big tripod so you can't see anything. Right? What I'll do here is I'll put up some macro footage as well, which hopefully will be good, so you don't get too bored. Let me see, right? so there's one big bit here. Let's put you in this big tank in the middle. 
Yeah, it's sinking lovely. So we waited, what? What was that, about eight minutes there? Sometimes you have to shake the bubbles off it, guys, to make it sink. Or you can do what a lot of people do, and that is add maybe a piece of gravel or something to it, and that will help it sink as well. Let us see. Yeah, so you want to add a little bit of this. Don't go berserk with it, like a mega big bit. Unless you know that the shrimp are ravenous. A little goes a long way. Right, so the, the goal with this stuff as well, guys, as we talked about there, is to feed the baby shrimp. Feed them, make sure they're getting enough nutrients. It's also a really good way to film them, which you're going to see, hopefully, with some macro footage. Because we've had a lot of babies this week. Lots and lots of baby shrimp this week in different tanks, different stages like newborns and whatever else. So yeah, Mark, stop blethering and uh, get the food into the tanks. All right, did I do all that row there? I didn't do this one here. This one has a red mark, no, no it doesn't, it, I thought this one had a red mark on it, that's why I didn't do it. Well, it seems fine to me. The red marker just indicates that it's something that I should look into. Right, I think I've done this entire side here, maybe that crystal red shrimp tank. Get in there, I think. All right, I'm going behind me here. I'm going to start to add it to the other tanks. I'm going to add some to my Opa Uli tanks. God, the, the stuff doesn't have to stick to these tweezers. Right, things like bristlemose, pleco, whatever else, they absolutely love spinach, right? So you can go a little bit gung-ho with it. Right, I have a little bit left. I'm going to start to add it to our fun tank here. I've already fed these guys with some powdered spirulina today but we'll give them that as well because I, th I think they eat both they eat powder stuff and they eat solids just like me oh that was a really big bit right and you go yeah, some of these bits are huge alright so we have a little bit left we're going to add it to Just a few tanks, a few dribs and drabs here and there. Right guys, I'm going to let this water cool down. I can't really see. There's a few little bits in here. I'm going to let this water cool down and then I'm going to use it for watering the plants. Alright, so we've done our food. We've added our fulvic. I have a little list of stuff to talk about here today, guys. Alright, here's one. You want to come a little bit closer? Sit on my knee? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let me see, I'll grab the other tripod. I'm going to transfer you from one tripod to the other tripod, just to get you a little bit closer. So guys, if you haven't noticed, Saturday videos are really unedited. For the most part, like if I'm just boring as F for a few minutes, I won't say anything. 
I will cut that. But if, uh, yeah, these videos are going to be a little bit longer. Okay, so I've added a little list of stuff I need to talk about on my channel. Where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? Hmm. All right, guys, let's talk about a few things. Let's get some things off my chest. Saturday's the perfect time for it. Let's talk about trolls briefly because last week I had about probably three of them on my channel. And some of them guys, you just you just wonder like, what is the point in you waking up in the morning and being nasty to someone on the internet that you don't know? I can never understand that at all, right? And it's people that just leave nasty comments, derogatory comments, right? So what I've decided to do guys is anyone that is, shows any sign of negativity on my channel, and I mean, I don't mean like negativity towards my tanks, like saying, oh Mark, you're, you'd be better doing it this way or whatever. I don't mean like that. What I mean is someone that's like, making a personal insult or something like that you will be hidden from my channel I'm not going to give you the the time of day so yeah, you're going to be hidden from my channel I had uh, a guy last week that came in on a couple of different accounts crying about stuff I'm like oh my god mate you you're talking about me crying about YouTube and then you're on my channel literally crying to a stranger that you've never met about stuff right and then the same guy sending me emails and I'm like you, you're just being instantly blocked what's the point What's the point? Right? Go do something with yourself. Go do something with your life. Anywho, right, there's, here's another one. Right? So that, that is that one off my chest, a little bit about the trolls. Right? So that's probably I will, the only thing I'll ever say on my channel about them is, yeah, you're going to be hidden from my channel and blocked so no one can see what you're actually saying. You will be sitting here typing, Mark, you big-headed mother, beep, 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 bleeping. Right? Nobody, nobody will ever see it, but you'll think you're pressing enter and I'm seeing it, but we don't. It's amazing. More coffee, please. You know, you know what it is, guys, today? It feels like I have a hangover and I, I don't drink at all. <laughs> hmm. All right, here's a good one. Right, I have a request for equipment. If you guys, if there's any one of you there that have spare stuff, and I mean like, um, you know what it's like when you have a shrimp room? You have excess um, needs of certain things. Right? I need, so I need sponge filters, I need uh, float valves, and yeah, I can buy all this stuff on like AliExpress and whatever else and get them in two months and uh, that would be the end of it. But guys, what is the point in us having like a shrimp community if, if you, I mean, I know for sure a lot of you guys will have this equipment probably sitting in a bag somewhere in your cellar that you never use, right? So this is a request for equipment. If you have any sponge filters as an example, because Yesterday I was going around my tanks and I was adding an extra sponge, sponge filter to each tank. Like this tank here got an extra two sponge filters. And I was going through them. Guys, I had I thought I had loads of them, like probably like 50 of them or something. And I don't. I had maybe 30. So some of my tanks got double sponge filters. Some of them, the bigger ones, have four. But um, yeah, if you have sponge filters and you have a lot of them. Guys, what I'm saying here is if you have just one sponge filter, I, I don't want your one sponge, sponge filter. But if you have a bag of 10 of them, for example, or, or a bucket of 20 of them, or an example that I could clean up myself, and um, using, my, my, using my show, using my uh, shrimp prim, be productive with them, then please send me an email. My email address is in my about section, or in my description below. Right, so the other thing I was requesting was float valves, because they're ridiculously priced. Right, so if you have a uh, shrimp trim, you have 30 tanks. Because remember, guys, I'm going to be expanding in here as well. And um, uh, if you have, like, right now I have maybe 25 tanks, something like that. I want to do uh, float valves for, for auto top-up. And that is it. I'm not going to use them for doing water changes, but I want to use them for auto top-up, which is quite a good thing to have in the summer when all these lids are off and you're having to compensate for evaporation. Right, so if any of you guys, again, have them, if you have a box of float valves in your basement that you do no longer use, then please hit me up on the email address below. It doesn't matter if they're used, I'll, I'll clean them and uh, yeah, we'll get them into our tanks, get them cleaned, used and into our tank rig, because that is the purpose of our community, is it, isn't it? Helping each other? <laughs> um, oh, the other thing was, is I have, I know this for sure, right, I, in, in the future, um, I have people that are giving me shrimp, right? So I don't normally take things off of people, but some people have offered me things. I'm not going to go into detail what it is now, just in case a lot of this stuff doesn't come to fruition. But 
Uh, some of this stuff is from reputable people. And some guys, I'm asking you, would you like to sponsor a tank? We did sponsor tanks before, and I think it's probably worthwhile us doing it again. We still have the uh, Rob Iota and Tater Salad um, Opa Ule tank down here. Remember, both of you guys. I think Rob, he paid for the tank, and uh, um, the other guy. Oh my God, I just said your name, I've forgotten it. You gave me loads of shrimp. So, yes, my God, I can't believe I've forgotten your name. Even though I just said it, I forgot you. Know, that's how bad my memory gets, guys, for doing stuff. Uh, so I'm looking for tank sponsors. If you want to sponsor a tank in the shrimp room, it could be a certain type of shrimp that you want to send to me. If you're willing to pay for overnight shipping, if you're going to sponsor the tank, you're going to pay for everything. It doesn't mean... Because, guys, this is one of the things that's hard for me living in Norway is I get a lot of uh, people wanting to give me stuff like bigger brands and whatever else, and then they back out in the end when they see how much they have to pay in shipping and tax. Because, for example, right, um, I had a shipment of uh, aquariums, and there was a lot of them, there's lights and whatever else, right, and then uh, when they came here, there was uh, a tax bill that the customs wanted me to pay, and it was, it was a lot of that, for me it was a lot of that time, when I just started my shrimp room and whatever else. You know when you're struggling just to pay bills and put food into the kids' mouths? And uh, the, the tax bill was something like uh, $300, I think it was. Maybe $400, I think it was, because I got a lot of stuff from this company. And uh, I was quite embarrassed that I couldn't afford it, so I asked them, could you pay for it? And they were, they were fine, they paid for it. So if you're a bigger company, could you please pay for your tax and the shipping? I know it sounds like I'm asking an awful lot, but you're getting a lot in return. I have an awful lot of subscribers. I'm going to have even more subscribers in the future. So yeah, if you want to sponsor the tax, do that. Guys, it doesn't even have to be, you don't even have to be a company to sponsor a tank. If you're just some guy that breeds shrimp in X country and you want to do the same thing, you want to send me a certain shrimp and you're going to have a dedicated tank for you. I will even put your name on the tank we've, we've done with the shrimp names. You'll have a dedicated tank and uh, that is the way it'll go because guys, being realistic, it's not cheap keeping shrimp and shrimp tanks and you know what it's like, the cost of living with the price of electricity and whatever else. This month's electricity bill was 600, and I think it was $650, which is an awful lot. Right? So, yeah, I, that's almost what I make on YouTube in one month. So that's all of the YouTube's money away with just one electricity bill from the shrimp room. Anyway, so if you're a sponsor and you would be interested, hit me up. Again, details in the comment section below. Uh, let me see, we're talking about tank sponsors. Uh, we've already requested equipment. I, I put that twice for some reason on my wheel list. Reco maybe, it's, maybe it's a sign. Request equipment. Dennis, that was your name. Oh my God. Dennis was the other guy that gave me all the shrimp. You see what I mean with my memory, guys? It just goes and comes. And oh God, it's hard work being a shrimp keeper. It's hard work being me, actually. <laughs> all right, so guys, the other things we're going to talk about before we get onto more macro footage and whatever else is... Um, I want to push my memberships because um, when I had when I was doing the live streams, right, obviously I was putting more effort into to my content, but I can't really do live streaming here. I don't think, right? I have Starlink internet, and yeah, the upload is a little bit sketchy at the best of times. So if you have kids in the house and everybody's watching movies and whatever else, and you can understand it's a little bit hard for me to do live streams. But if you would be interested in uh, becoming a member, I would really appreciate that. I think it's like five dollars a month or something like that and um, I give you early access to videos so today, today's video for example some of you will see earlier members will see earlier it could be an hour earlier a couple of hours earlier it could be sometimes like a day earlier but you'll get to see something earlier and um, it helps my channel out a ton just all these little bits and pieces because guys I have big plans I have big big plans for my little shrimp room and I can't do that without extra funding. And you know what it's like. I'm, I'm telling you that YouTube just doesn't pay enough for this kind of thing. And there's no shame in asking for help, especially when you have a community the size that I have going around. I mean, I have Facebook, what's it, 55,000 members on my Facebook uh, group. On, on here, was it now? 63. Combined, it's over 100k people. Right, so I don't think it's too much to ask for help with things. Because, guys, I, I know what you guys are like anyway. A lot of you will have excessive stuff. Some of you will be millionaires, some of you will be poor buggers like me, and yeah, there's, there's no harm 
and, and uh, putting the feelers out there and seeing what's around. And if you have extra equipment, send it to me. <laughs> I can't be any more blunt than that. If you have extra equipment, send it to me. Well, guys, we're talking about memberships there. Um, I'm actually starting to put the memberships stuff on the screen. Like, I'll just do it just so you can see what I mean. Right? So if you remember your face, so your name, your face, you might imagine I've had all your faces, your, your name will get put up here. And that will be my way of thanking you for helping me do the things I do in my shrimp room. Because as I said, I have big plans. I want to, um, I never want to be, the, I never want to be the guy that is so big that I lose interest in one tank. Like, I don't want to get so big that I have no interest in looking at this tank. I, I don't want to get so big that I feel like I need to sell shrimp because that's something I just don't wish to do is sell shrimp. It's just too much hassle. So what I want to do, guys, is I want to have more of a confined space with my shrimp tank. So you, you all know that the room next door will be, be made into a uh, shrimp room as well. It might even be half the room, just a shrimp room. I'm not, not sure how we're going to work it for space yet. But my plan is to have... Um, Limited, limited tanks, right, for me, so limited tanks for me will be 50 tanks. I know some of you guys that have, uh, there's one guy, Grant Eder, that has, <laughs> you have like 600 tanks, dude, what the hell? Anyway, that's far too much for me. But if, um, if I can get like up to 40, 50 tanks, the reason that, that number is good, guys, is because it allows me to make a really good video once a week. I know I've been doing them daily now, but when you have more tanks, you can do more stuff, right? This is what hamstrung me in my old house was I'd reached that point where I just couldn't do any more with the space I had. I mean, just say, for example, this tank here is doing fantastic and the shrimp are breeding awesomely. And then the next one's doing the same. And then the next one's just a tank restart. And then the next one is one I set up a month ago. You can see the issue with the amount of tanks that we have, right? So sometimes these videos can get a little bit boring with um, being a little bit monotonous, like, oh, another shrimp feeding video or whatever else, but I'll try my best, guys, to try and mix them up a little bit. That's why I'm trying to do right now, like, the shorter ones, not the shorts, because I'm kind of going off shorts. I can see from the data that shorts really don't help my channel a lot at all. You don't get paid for them very well. Uh, you get very little subscribers from them. The watch time is horrific from shorts because they're so short. If you're new to YouTube, then um, if you have aspirations of doing shorts for a living, you, yeah, you, realistically, guys, you need to get like 20 million views a month to be able to live off shorts, which is an awful lot. 20 million views. Now, to give you an example of how much shorts views I get a month, it's probably less than 10,000 views a month, something like that. It's very, very small. So in my case, it's not worth my while doing short videos, but the longer content works. And I mean content that is interesting, like you guys all like to watch shrimp. And if I can keep you interested enough in my channel, you'll watch longer, right? So long form content is better for YouTube as well because they put more ads on this type of content. And if you can make a good long form t content video, then YouTube tends to reward you more. They, they show your videos everywhere and you get like uh, t videos taken off and whatever else. So yeah, one of my first most successful videos was the one I made about crystal red shrimp. I got like quarter of a million views or something and it was 40 minutes long. Right, so I should have learned from then that doing the short videos are okay. They're okay sometimes for filler videos for like, like now I'm doing daily videos. So it's okay to do a 10 minute video that time. But ideally guys, if you're new to YouTube, you should be heading for videos over at least 20 minutes. At least I would say is the minimum. And yeah. That is the way you do it. Got him. I didn't have to go on off a tangent, but we covered a lot of stuff here today. Right, guys, I'm going to um, going to end the video here. If you've enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe. As I said, all through this video, we would have put up uh, tons of macro footage. I've waited this long, guys, because I want to see that my shrimp are actually on the food before I take macro footage this time. And guys, I'll see you in the next one, which will be on Monday, not tomorrow, because I'm having the one day off, one day off a week, which is it suits me down to a tea. Thank you for watching. Happy shrimp keeping.